Happy New Year, folks, and welcome to another episode of The Long Ride. My name is Rachel McIntyre-Smith, and I'm a singer-songwriter creating a career for myself in the music industry by following Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 Hour Rule. I started this series of filming my 10,000 hours on January 1st of 2020, and since then I've put in 4,980 hours of work. And since my last update, I have put in 1,413 hours. And those hours have been spent creating content for social media, releasing new music, playing shows, networking, writing songs, and recording and planning my next EP, which will be out in 2024. But a lot of the stuff that I've been working on is stuff that's sort of been behind the scenes that I think might start paying off in 2024. Here are my updated statistics as of December 26th. 2023. On Facebook, I have 746 followers. On Twitter, I have 460 followers. On Instagram, I have 2,124 followers. On Spotify, I have 762 followers. On YouTube, I have 515 subscribers. And on TikTok, I have 6,020 followers. So here's what I've been up to for the past year. Something that really affected my music in 2023 was in March, I had to get a tonsillectomy. And that was my first ever surgery, so I was really nervous about it. I actually recorded over 200 videos the night before because I was afraid I was never going to be able to sing again. So there are so many videos I still haven't posted, but that recovery went really good. The medicine they gave me made me laugh uncontrollably. <laughs> Her little paws look funny. <laughs> I think you're worrying her. Since I've had my tonsillectomy, I've noticed a huge difference in my voice. I don't think it affected my tone, but it affected the way it feels whenever I sing. I think it's because my tonsils were so swollen that it was hard to get breath support for those extremes of my range. And I think that that'll pay off in the long run of not always having strep throat whenever I'm trying to play shows, not always having to deal with sinuses and swelling in the back of my throat. Another major thing that happened in 2023 was I moved to Nashville. It was a really hectic time because I had my tonsillectomy and then I had a weekend where I was playing my first shows. I played the Dogwood Arts Festival in Knoxville and then I played the Cornbread Festival in South Pittsburgh and then the day after that was the day that I moved in. But I'm still getting sort of settled into Nashville. I still work full time and so trying to make time to see people and get coffee with them or write with them or plan songwriter nights or things like that. Um, I'm still sort of getting in the swing of that. Another major highlight for 2023 for me was I had my first ever headlining show. It was at the Woodshop in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I love that venue. I've opened there several times. We almost sold out. I think we were just four or five tickets shy of selling out that night. I have to give a huge shout out to my friend Tori who went all around Chattanooga with me hanging up posters. And then another huge thank you to the folks at WUTC who had me on the show, Richard Wynnum and Haley Solomon. We actually had a few people that showed up that said that they came because they heard me on WUTC. And that show went great. I played with Amber Fultz and Emerald Butler. It couldn't have gone any better. And so I'm looking forward to having some more headlining shows in 2024. I performed on the TV show in Nashville called Today in Nashville and I played The Woods and Glory Days, and that was a really fun experience. I was able to be a part of WUTC's Christmas special, and I got to play three songs. Also in 2023, I was interviewed for the Small Town Tourist podcast, and the host actually reached out to me afterwards and asked me if she could use my song, Queen of Our Hometown, for their podcast theme song. But for now, here's our new theme song, Queen of Our Hometown, by Rachel McIntyre-Smith. Go and stream it wherever you listen to music. So come on home, claim your throne when life gets you down acoustic versions of my debut EP Glory Days and got some press for that. I also got to open for some cool artists in 2023 and one of those artists was Gabe Lee. I opened for him also at the woodshop. He was just so kind. I actually had a crazy incident happen when I was opening for him. Quick story time. I was doing soundcheck before opening for Gabe and I was moving my keyboard and keyboard stand over to a different part of the performance area. A bolt had come out of my keyboard stand. Whenever I was moving it with Pate, who's the sound guy and also venue owner, the keyboard and the keyboard stand collapsed and smashed my hand in between the keyboard stand and the piano and I couldn't get my hand out. We had to like pry my hand out of it. You can kind of still see um, a little bit the the mark that it left and that was at the beginning of November. I was just like determined that it wasn't a problem that I was gonna just keep on going on even though it hurt so bad when it happened but I was like I'm the opening act it can't be dramatic. It was bleeding and it was bruised and Pate was so freaked out he was like Rachel you need to sit down you need some water are you sure you're okay and I was like yeah 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 it's fine and then whenever I said that all the tears went out and then I just was like and I passed out. 
and I woke up to Gabe holding me on one side, the bartender holding me on the other, and Pate was in front of me snapping his fingers and he was like, Rachel, I'm on the phone with 911, we're calling in an ambulance, are you okay? And I was like, no, 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 I can't afford an ambulance, I am a-okay. So I just had some popcorn, had some water, um, I had reworked my set and then I played my set and it went perfectly fine. Um, and Gabe was so nice throughout that whole thing and he actually ended up inviting me to play at his record label's Christmas party. If you've been following my music for a while, then you've probably seen one of my videos where I talked about Grady Smith, the country music YouTuber, posting about my music. Because he started posting about my music, I saw some huge gains in 2022, got my first Spotify editorial playlist, got my song played on BBC Radio. Well, just a few weeks ago, I got to meet Grady Smith at Gabe Lee's holiday party. He was so nice. He's exactly the kind of person that you would want him to be. Another really cool thing that happened in 2023 was I released my first ever Christmas song called Tis the Season to Stir the Pot. Tis the season and spread some cheers, stir the pot while you are here, that's what the holidays are for. Aaron Anderson, who I've been working with for a couple years now, told me that I needed to put that song out in mid-October if I wanted it to land on one of the Spotify editorial playlists. But I felt really weird releasing that song on like October 20th. But on November 5th, I got a notification that Tis the Season to Stir the Pot had been added to the Bluegrass Christmas playlist. And because of that, I've seen some huge gains in my Spotify listeners. The last I checked, which I'm recording this on December 26th, I had 18,600 monthly listeners and it's because that song has been placed on that playlist and then from that people have added it to over 700 different Christmas playlists that they've had. So that is kind of on track right now to be my highest performing song. It's about 30,000 streams right now and Glory Days has I think 36,000 streams right now. I've done some really fun Christmas shows because of that. I played the WDDX Blue Plate Special, I played Gabe Lee's Holiday Party, I did some collaboration videos with the great bluegrass band called High Carbon Steel. Mama light the candle in the window Yes, I know I've been away too long. Well, I played at the Oliver Springs Community Christmas Concert. I played at Main Time 24 in Chattanooga. And then I opened for Janelle Arthur at the Capitol Theater in Lebanon, Tennessee for her Christmas concert. So it's been a really busy December. I hope that I can sort of build upon that momentum that I've had with this Christmas song and lead me into 2024 with my new releases. I'm really excited to share this next EP with you guys. It's got my favorite songs I've ever written on it. I've been working with Dre and Michael again in Chattanooga to record that and I've been planning cool things to go along with that EP. I'm gonna be working with the same publicist who did such great work with me for Glory Days and so I'm really really looking forward to 2024. Another cool thing is now Glory Days can be bought inside Jefferson Drugstore in Oak Ridge and so that's the first place that's ever actually sold my CDs in store and so that's really cool. Hopefully some folks will be able to find my music through that too. Huge shout out to Melanie Tackett for arranging that. I just want to say thank you to everybody who has joined me along this journey in 2023. I've really enjoyed playing all these different shows and finding you guys online who have related to the music. I just feel like we're just getting started and I can't wait to see what 2024 holds. Special thank you to Krista Mettler, who is an incredible publicist I've been working with. Erin Anderson, who I work with, she's my consultant. Thank you to my friends who have shown up to my gigs. I'm really hopeful for what 2024 is gonna hold. And so if you're here for the long ride and you wanna see if the 10,000 hour rule works, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll be putting out a next video shortly. Bye and happy new year.